Hi and thanks for joining me and in this video we're going to cover some of the new features that you're going to see in Google Classroom coming this August 2018. Now as was released by Google just a few weeks ago, Google Classroom is going through some beta testing right now for some new features that will be released probably around August 20th or 22nd. And so at that time, teachers are going to see some features that I know you're going to love and um, some features that are just going to make the classroom a little bit easier to use. Now, the first thing that you're going to notice is that the three menus at the top have changed. So you have the stream, you have classwork, and you have people. Now, the stream is exactly what you think it is. It's going to be a place where, much like a live stream for Twitter or Facebook, it's going to be a series of posts showing what activity is going on in the classroom, which gives students the ability to quickly see what's going on as far as updates on assignments or announcements that the teacher is giving. A couple of the minor differences that you'll see is, first of all, when you're in the stream, if you go to the add button at the bottom right, you'll see that you only have the option to create announcements or reuse posts. That's because primarily the stream is used to, as I said, create announcements that the teacher might have for class, but also to create a brief announcement of classwork that is posted in the classwork menu. If we go to the classwork menu, you'll see that when you go to the add button, you can still create assignments, questions. You'll notice that announcement is no longer here. It's been replaced by topic. Um, that again is back here in the stream. And then finally, instead of the about menu or the student menu, you have the people menu. And in the people menu, this is where all teachers, co-teachers or collaborators will show as well as students. And this is also where you'll find your class code if you choose to use a class code for student enrollments. So for now, I'm gonna go ahead and reuse a post so that you can see what this looks like. And if I click reuse, in this case, it's just allowing me to reuse a post from a previous class or an archive class that I've had. And I'll go ahead and assign that. You'll notice that in the classwork category, it shows the assignment as it would appear for a teacher. And you'll notice that it has a label for Civil War, which was one of the labels that I had created. The, the thing about classwork is that assignments unless they have a label with them, will always appear together up here at the top. If they do have a label, then any assignments that have the same label will be clustered together like this. So I'll go ahead and create a question. Let's say we're going to ask a question about North versus South for the Civil War. And I'll go ahead and take that label Civil War and click Ask. And so because it has the same label as the previous assignment, it's clustered together there. If I add another assignment for, let's say World War II, and give it the label World War II for a different unit. And you know, as, as always with any assignment, we can attach documents. Uh, so let's say we're gonna attach a document. And I'm just throwing things together here so you can see them. Then because it has a new label, it's clustered by itself separate from the Civil War unit. Back here in the stream, everything appears in order as it was posted so that students can see when and in what order I posted things. Back here on classwork, again, if I had another assignment and give it the same label as World War II, again, they're clustered together. So. The point of the classwork page is to give assignments to students so that they can work on them, click on them, and work on them from here, and see them as they're clustered together by their labels, units, chapters, or whatever. Uh, but the stream is also a place where they can access that same material. Now, this is what the teacher sees. So I'm gonna break out of here and go into another account and show you what it looks like for the student. Okay, so as you can see here, I've joined the class using a different account. And now there's a fourth menu for me. There's the stream, classwork, classmates, which would allow me to see uh, other students in the class, and then the about menu. And the about menu, where was that before? Well, the about section can now be found and edited the settings icon, which was previously not there. So let me show you what that looks like. Here I am as the teacher. I've got the stream, classwork, and people, but up here at the top I have this gear. If I click on the gear, I can click the pencil to edit the classroom name, the description. Um, I can also go over here and 
choose to change the settings on the class code. I can set my settings for the stream, and then I can choose to show deleted items. Additionally, you will see this about item over on the far right, which wasn't there before either, um, because it was a separate menu. And if you click on about here, uh, this is also where you get the class code that you can display for the class to see on the screen when they're enrolling with your code during class. Now, one other feature that you'll soon see is the addition of locked quizzes in Google Forms that are assigned in Google Classroom. Now, during this time in the beta test, it's not something that I can do right here to demonstrate for you, but it should be soon released in August. So one thing I'll do here is I'll go ahead and add an assignment and I'll call it quiz. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna have to create a Google form here so uh, that I can use this and demonstrate it. But one of the things that you're gonna have to remember about Google Forms is that um, anytime you are creating a form as a quiz, uh, you will need to set up the quiz or set up the form so it can be administered as a quiz. So I'm just gonna throw a couple of things on here. And the place that you do that, if you've forgotten this, is in the settings menu. Go to the quizzes option and turn on the make this a quiz toggle. Save that. And now I'm gonna jump back over to classroom. And in classroom, I will attach that quiz. And very soon what you'll see in this section here, once you've attached a form that can be used as a quiz, you should have the option to lock out quizzes for students. The other option that you should see if you're using uh, Google Classroom in a G Suite for Education environment is that you'll see the ability to import scores directly into Classroom. I'm using the consumer account, so I don't see that option here. Uh, but if you have more questions about that, you can also reference uh, the videos on my Google Forms playlist to see how that works. So just a quick view of some of those features just to see how they work. Um, you know, you will still see some more changes to come as they're going through beta testing, um, but hopefully we'll see a lot more changes as time comes and great things to use in the classroom and things that I think teachers will enjoy. Well, thanks for joining me this time. and. Uh, as soon as the new features are fully fledged and out there, I'll release a new video demonstrating those features again. Thanks for joining me.